Basic authentication is used as part of the OAuth client credentials flow. We'll show you what basic authentication is and how to add it into an ASP.NET Core web API. Remember to hit the subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash at round the code to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Learn Blazor WebAssembly and other c -sharp frameworks with our .NET online courses. Go to roundthecode.com slash courses. Basic authentication is a way for a web browser to provide a username and password when making a HTTP request. The username and password is added to the headers as part of the HTTP request. The header is added with the authorization key and the value formatted with basic, followed by a space, followed by a base64 encoded hash of the username and password. To generate the base64 encoded hash, just say we have this username and password. We would join the username and password into a string with a colon separating the two. As a result, it means that the username cannot have a colon in it. This string is then encoded using base64 and generates a hash that we can use to send as part of the HTTP request. Basic authentication can be used as part of the OAuth authentication when requesting an access token. This happens with the client credentials flow, where the client ID is used for the username and the client secret is used for the password. The client calls an API endpoint on the server, which contains the base64 encoded hash of the client ID and secret. The server decodes the hash and authenticates the client credentials. On successful authentication, an access token is generated in the form of a bearer token. The bearer token is used for authentication across other API endpoints. We have two .NET projects as part of our Visual Studio solution. The roundthecode.basicauthentication.web API is an ASP.NET Core web API. This is where we'll test the functionality for our basic authentication. We'll store that functionality in this class library called roundthecode.basicauthentication.shared. As we're using the ASP.NET Core authentication and authorization libraries, we need to include them as NuGet packages within the class library. Our first job is to create an attribute. This attribute will be used for endpoints in our ASP.NET Core web API. This is so we can tell which endpoints use basic authentication. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new folder and we're gonna call it attributes. From there, we're going to go ahead and add a new class and call it basic authorization attribute. Set the access modifier as public and we're going to inherit the authorize attribute. Within the authorize attribute, there's an authentication schemes property. This is where we set the authentication scheme. Let's create the constructor for the basic authorization attribute. And we're going to set the authentication schemes to basic authentication defaults dot authentication scheme. This will be the name of our authentication scheme. This is just a constant string with the word of basic. We want to store some details about the client that we're authenticating. Let's go ahead and create a new class and call it basic authentication client. Once again, make it public and we're going to inherit the iIdentity interface. Within the iIdentity interface, we've got a number of properties that we need to inherit. The authentication type just tells us the authentication type that we're using. We've also got an is authenticated property, and this just tells us whether the client is authenticated or not. Then we've got the name, and this just tells us the client's name. Let's go ahead and set these up properly. And that's our client class setup. Our next step is to create a handler that will handle our basic authentication. 
add a new class and call it basic authentication handler. Make it public and let's inherit the authentication handler with a generic type of authentication scheme options. For this, we need to generate a constructor which will construct the class from the base. As well as that, we need to override the abstract class of handle authenticate async. Our first step is to check whether the headers in the request has an authorization key. If it doesn't, we fail the authentication. So we call request.headers.contains key authorization. If it doesn't contain it, we return a task from result and we call authenticate result.fail with a failure message of missing authorization key. Now that we know that the authorization header exists, we can store it in a variable. So we'll name the variable authorization header and we'll call request.headers with the authorization key and convert it into a string. Next, we want to make sure that the authorization header value starts with the word basic. If it doesn't, we want to fail the authentication. So we call authorization header starts with basic followed by a space. We want to ignore the case, so we call string comparison dot ordinal ignore case. If it doesn't start with the word basic, we once again fail the authentication and we'll update the error message. Authorization header does not start with basic. Now that we know that the authorization key is formatted correctly, we want to get the value out of it and decode it using base64. So we call encoding.utf8.getString And we need to convert it from the base64 string. Now the authorization header already has the word basic in a space, so we want to replace that. And once again, we ignore the case. We want to set the username and password to separate values. To do that, we need to split it. So we call off base64 decoded and the split function. We use the separator as the colon. And we want to limit it to two values. We want to check that there are two values within our auth split array. If there isn't, we go ahead and fail the authentication. So we can check the length of that. And if it's not two, we fail the authentication. Set the message to invalid authorization header format. At this point, we know that we've got the client ID and the client secret successfully formatted in the auth split array. That means we can go ahead and set it in separate variables. So we'll set the client ID and the client secret. 
Now with this, what you'd normally do is you'd authenticate it against the database. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to do raw values. So we're going to assume that the client ID is round the code and so is client secret. If it isn't, we fail the authentication. So we say if the client ID is not round the code or the client secret is not round the code, go ahead and fail the authentication. And we can put a message saying the secret is incorrect. At this point, we've authenticated the client, so we can create a new client instance of it to store the details about the authentication. So we call a new instance of basic authentication client. We set the authentication type as basic authentication defaults dot authentication scheme which is just the word basic stored as a constant string. We set that it's authenticated and we'll put in the name as the client ID. Then we set a claims principle called new claims principle with a new claims identity We can set the identity, which will be our client. And we can also set some claims for it. So for this, we're going to set up a new claim with the claims type of name. And because our name is round the code, we're just going to simply set the client ID in there. Now we can return a successful authentication. And to do that, we call authenticate result dot success with a new authentication ticket, the claims principle and the scheme name. That's the basic authentication functionality setup. We now want to add it to our ASP.NET Core Web API so we can start using it. To do that, we go into the program.cs file and we add a new service. We want to add authentication and we also want to add the basic authentication scheme. So we call add scheme with a couple of generic types, authentication scheme options, and the type of the handler, which is basic authentication handler. Within that, we need to set the name, so we call basic authentication defaults to authentication scheme, which is the word basic, and we don't have any additional options, so we can just set that as null. Now we're going to test this using Swagger. In order to do that, though, we need to add some additional configuration for basic authentication. So we find add Swagger gen, and we pass in some options. The first option is to add a security definition. The name of it is basic authentication defaults to authentication scheme, which is of course the word basic. Then we need to add an open API security scheme new instance. We set the name as authorization. The type as security scheme type HTTP, the scheme as basic authentication defaults authentication scheme, which is the word basic. We're setting that it's going to be a header and a description. Next, we need to add a security requirement. We create a new open API security requirement and then a new open API security scheme. Within that, we need to set the reference with a new open API reference, of which the type is reference type dot security scheme 
and the ID is basic authentication defaults dot authentication scheme. We also need to set the value. So we create a new string array and set the value as basic. We want to test our basic authentication functionality in a web API endpoint. In our ASP.NET Core web API, go ahead and create a new folder called controllers. Within that, add a new controller, which we'll name OAuth controller. Set a root for the controller, and we're going to pass in the controller placeholder. This means that it will use OAuth as the root. Rename this method to token, and within that, we're going to pass in the HTTP POST attribute with a root of token. In addition, we'll pass in the basic authorization attribute. That means that this method will only be executed if it passes our basic authentication. Let's return a 200 response and run the application to test it. Let's run our API endpoint without any login credentials. It's returning a 401 error response. Let's put in some random credentials that are incorrect. This time it's formed our basic authorization header. However, it's still returning a 401 response. Let's change that and put in the correct credentials. Username or the client ID of round the code and the password or the client secret of round the code. This time it's returning a 200 response, meaning our client has been successfully authenticated. To purchase the code sample used in this tutorial, go to roundthecode.com slash .net hyphen samples. You'll get the attribute, handler and client for basic authentication alongside an example use in an ASP.NET Core web API. Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.